So Matrix is a large international multi center studies that has been conducted uh, across 78 sites across four European countries. We focus on patients with acute coronary syndrome who were in the need for invasive management. At that moment, the patients were first considered for the so-called access component of the matrix, namely patients were randomly located to receive this invasive management either through the radial or the femoral access site. Now, when the angiography was done, anatomy was known, and in those patients whom there was indication to PCI, then the patients were considered for the second piece of the study, which we called antithrombin study, where we compared at the time of PCI other unfractionated heparin with provisional glycoprotein to B3 inhibitors that was left to the discretion of the treating physician or by rodin. Finally, in patients allocated into the bivarudin arm, they were either randomly allocated to stop the treatment after PCI or continue after PCI for at least four hours. Here at ESC 2018, actually we present for the very first time the final one-year results of the entire program. So we showed actually both primary endpoint for the radial versus femoral axis side comparison, namely MACE and NACE. And the same was true for the antithrombin program. A again, the two primary endpoint, MACE and NACE, and the primary endpoint for the treatment duration, which is what we call the NACE plus. It's a sort of a NACE enriched endpoint where we also take stent thrombosis and urgent target vessel vascularization into account. So basically, matrix at one year showed a sort of a carryover of the findings that we already saw at 30 days, meaning the NACE endpoint, which was already in favor of the radial approach at 30 days, and that continued actually to be so at one year follow-up. Importantly, radial remained associated to a significant cardiovascular mortality reduction, as well as a mitigation of the bleeding risks across the board, and this benefit came entirely from the reduction of bleeding, which were related to the access side. With respect to the antithrombin comparison, the two co-primary endpoints at 30 days were actually negative, and actually they remained to be so at 30 days. However, for uh, bivarudin, there was also a signal there, actually at a statistical significant level, that bivarudin was also associated to reduced all cause as well as cardiovascular mortality. And also bivarudin did the job of reducing bleeding complications. And this time the benefit came from consistently a mitigation of both bleeding related to the access site as well as those not related to the access site. Finally, the third component of the study, treatment duration, we failed to show a superiority of prolonging bivarudin versus stopping at the end of PCI. However, I think it's very important to look into the data because in the prolonged bivarudin arm, we allowed two potential regimens to be used. And when we, at exploratory analysis, have looked into what is the role of each bivarudin regimen, actually we show an incredible benefit for the I bivarudin regimen, basically a continuation of the regimen that you are already using during PCI for up to four hours afterwards, those patients actually got a very low risk of ischemic events, including very low rate of stent thrombosis. On the other side of the equation, patients who got allocated to the low bivalent regimen had much, much higher ischemic event rates. Interesting to note that there are some data which probably we have not been considered too deeply when we designed the study, suggesting that the low bivalent regimen can actually be too low and actually be associated to a pro-thrombotic effect. And actually, this may explain our findings quite nicely, I have to say. So I think there are two major takeaways from the matrix program. I think from my side, number one is that radial should become the default access site in patients with ICS undergoing invasive management. This was already coming from a European Society of Cardiology guidelines recommendation. A radial has been updated to a class 1A uh, as compared to femoral approach. However, it's quite interesting to note in some part of the world, uh, still femoral is the prevalent and dominant access site. So I think that needs perhaps some rethinking in those sites because in fact, the learning curve to transition from femoral to radial is not that steep, is not that impossible. And with some commitment, every single operator can actually achieve that. With respect to the antithrombin uh, phase of the study, I think what we can conclude that bivarudin, despite not being able to fulfill superiority for both co-primary points, I think it has still some potential clinical advantage, especially in patients who are high bleeding risk, not just for the access side, because of course you can mitigate those bleeding by using radial, but also we know uh, bleeding coming from the non-access site are actually more prevalent than the access site ones. So if you have a patient like that on the table, I think the use of bivarudin makes a lot of sense.